Florida's beaches are under attack, but not by hurricanes, not by sharks or jellyfish, and not even by another wave of spring breakers trying to shotgun White Claws out there at 10 a.m. Nope, this threat is a lot older, it's a lot slimier, and it even smells like a science fair project gone wrong. It's called sargasm, and if you've been anywhere near Florida's coastline lately, you've probably seen it, you may have even stepped in it, and you've definitely smelled it. And stick around, because today we're going to dive into the mystery of this massive, stinky seaweed invasion and what it means for Florida's future. But before we do, if you love discovering the real Florida, from hidden gems to theme parks to surprise seaweed invasions, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow, and I truly, sincerely appreciate it. I've got lots more Florida travel tips, weird Florida stories, and offbeat adventures coming your way. Sargasm isn't just some gross sea junk washing up on the shore, it's actually a type of brown algae, one of the only seaweeds that floats on the open ocean. In its natural habitat, the Sargasso Sea in the Atlantic, it's great for the ecosystem. But here's the problem. It wasn't meant to end up here, on shore, on the beach, in giant stinking piles that make beach vacations smell like a rotten egg omelet. And right now, a 5,000 mile long seaweed superhighway is drifting across the Atlantic toward Florida right now as we speak. It's called the Great Atlantic Sargasm Belt and it's been growing fast thanks to a perfect storm of environmental factors. Warmer ocean temperatures, fertilizer and sewage runoff from the Amazon and Mississippi rivers, and shifts in ocean currents and wind patterns have all helped this thing grow. And together, these things all turn the Atlantic into one big algae smoothie. And each year, more of this mess ends up smothering Florida's beaches. According to the University of South Florida's Optical Oceanography Lab, April of 2025 set a brand new record for sargasm levels in the Eastern Caribbean and Western Atlantic, exceeding the previous all-time high from June of 2022. And that was a bad year for this stuff. Scientists estimate the total mass of sargasm floating in the Atlantic right now at 31 million metric tons. That's a staggering 40% higher than the previous record. And this massive bloom began forming earlier than usual and is expected to continue growing, moving into the Western Caribbean and drifting toward the Gulf and toward Florida through the Yucatan. So what does that mean? It means sargasm inundation is likely across much of the Caribbean and Florida's Atlantic coast. 2025 is shaping up to be Florida's worst sargasm season on record. Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Out in the ocean, we love it. It's a floating ecosystem. But on land, on the beach, it's a hot, stinking health hazard. As this stuff decomposes, it releases hydrogen sulfide gas, which smells like rotten eggs and can cause headaches, nausea, and breathing issues for some people. Touching the stuff itself isn't dangerous, but large rotting piles of it can be a health risk, especially for anyone with asthma or other respiratory conditions. And pet owners, please don't let your dogs eat it. And in case you're wondering, this is a different issue than red tide. Red tide is a toxic algae bloom that kills fish and irritates lungs. This stuff, it's not toxic, but it is still a serious problem when it piles up on the beaches. And it's not great for tourism either. Cities along Florida's coast have seen hotel bookings drop, with tourists avoiding the beaches that look and smell like compost piles. And I haven't even mentioned how bad this stuff is for the sea turtles yet. Heavy sargasm can trap hatchlings trying to reach the open ocean and smother their nesting sites entirely. And here's the worst part. Sea turtle nesting season runs March through October, meaning this seaweed invasion overlaps almost perfectly with their most vulnerable time. And removing this stuff isn't as simple as just raking the sand. In 2023, Miami-Dade County alone spent over 3 million bucks trying to clean this stuff up. And that number is only expected to rise. If beach crews go too hard with heavy machinery, they risk damaging the dunes and beach habitats even more. And it's not just a problem for beachgoers. Local boaters and fishermen are reporting more clogged motors, seaweed buildup at inlets, and delays getting to open water. So now it's a question of spend more money and risk the environment or do nothing and lose tourism and marine access. Either way, it's a massive economic and environmental balancing act and it's a problem Florida is trying to solve. So what's actually being done about this seaweed siege? Across Florida and beyond, cities are using a mix of old school muscle and modern innovation to fight back. Miami-Dade County sends out beach crews armed with rakes and specialized tractors to collect the stuff daily. Fort Lauderdale composts it, turning beach gunk into nutrient-rich soil for city parks. I like that, that's a good idea. 
and Pompano Beach actually buries it in the sand to help prevent some beach erosion. So yeah, some Florida cities are quite literally composting the crisis into cleaner city soil. And down in Mexico, places like Cancun and Tulum are using these big offshore booms to block the incoming seaweed before it hits the land. Palm Beach County in Florida looked into doing that, but they backed off a little bit due to the high surf. They didn't think it would be very effective because of the waves and coral reefs and sea turtle concerns. But for now, mechanical removal, raking it and getting rid of it and composting are what's working best. But with the sargasm problem growing, more solutions may be on the horizon, at least we hope. So here's what you need to know. Peak season for this stuff is late spring through early fall. The Atlantic side of Florida is a lot more vulnerable to it because it's coming in off the Atlantic. And 2025 is already shaping up to be one of the worst years we've ever seen for this stuff. Well, that sucks. And if you're planning a trip, you might want to check local beach conditions before you pack the flip flops and head down there. It won't absolutely ruin your beach day. You don't have to avoid it, but just be aware that this stuff could be out there. And if you're wondering whether this is just a fluke, scientists are saying, nah, probably not. With warming waters and nutrient runoff showing no signs of slowing down, this could become Florida's new summer tradition. Sargasm isn't new, but the scale we're seeing now is a whole different thing. And it's a challenge Florida didn't ask for, but it's one we're gonna have to face head on. Whether that means smarter cleanup, better planning, or just better public awareness, we can't afford to ignore it. Because a shark might scare people out of the water, but seaweed, it's scaring them off the beach entirely. And thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful or interesting, it would mean so much to me if you hit that subscribe button. It really helps this channel grow and I sincerely appreciate that. I cover everything from secret springs to stinky seaweed and all the wild, weird Florida stories in between. Thanks a lot, stay safe, see you around the Sunshine State.